Welcome to the Oakland Mall in Troy, Michigan. While the empty Sears stood out to me as a red flag in 2021, that appears to have since been addressed. So, let's go and do a lap or two at the Oakland Mall. Sears was the first significant mark of the Oakland Mall, as the department store opened in 1965, ahead of the rest of the mall. It wouldn't be until 1968 when the mall itself would open its doors, featuring Hudson's as its other anchor. The mall even featured an SS Kresge, the precursor to Kmart as a junior anchor. And as the mall gained in popularity, it would see a 1979 expansion that would bring forward a two-floor wing that would approach J.C. Penney, the third anchor to join the mall as it hosted its grand opening in summer 1980. I wasn't able to find a lot of information on the mall, but looking through the newspapers, I did find a number of interesting decisions and highlights. Did you know that back then, at least in the late 60s, political speakers were banned as they were seen as not meaningful to the community? I won't linger on there, but other highlights included a Hudson's 25-year club banquet which was hosted in early 1980, hosted to recognize the work of the employees at the store. To bookend the 80s, in 1989, it was announced that Oakland Mall would get an overhaul, estimated to be around $15 million in value. This would update the mall's image, as well as expand the mall with new modernized corridors, a service corridor that would bring forward a tailor, barber, and a dry cleaner. And this renovation was actually leveraged by Hudson's, whom had their own plans to modernize their store at the mall, but threatened to slash those plans if the mall itself didn't get an update. And lo and behold, Hudson's would follow through with their own update, which apparently took three years to carry out. Despite facing stiffer competition against the Somerset Collection, which was set to open in 1992, Oakland Mall was still hanging in there while Hudson's came under fire as it cracked against competition. New stores like Borders Books and Music were coming to Oakland, and while a multi-screen movie theater at the mall closed in the year 2000, Stephen Berry's would open its doors in the theater's place. Hudson's would turn over to Marshall Fields in 2001, while a proposal was brought forward in 2004 to establish Lord & Taylor as the Oakland Mall's fourth department store. However, that proposal would end up falling through, and the fourth anchor would never be built. In the big picture, this was probably a blessing in disguise, seeing what would happen to Lord & Taylor in recent years. As the 2000s progressed, Oakland Mall would partake in charity programs like Helping Hands, meant to help the needy and those in poverty. But on the other hand, theft was rearing its ugly head, with the most notable case being a string of purse thefts in the mall parking lot. Two suspects, Churchill and Gloucester, were identified and promptly arrested and charged with multiple counts of unarmed robbery. In the big picture, this wouldn't impact the mall too badly, as Marshall Fields would turn over again to Macy's as the result of Federated Department Store's consolidation of multiple department store nameplates into one. It's a long story that I do not have time to explain. You know, 
Sometimes I forget that A&W is an actual food chain and not just a root beer. I've heard the food's not very good though, but the root beer's okay. As Stephen Berry's closed in 2009, and then Borders Books closed its doors in 2011, both thanks to bankruptcy, the mall was still kicking as Forever 21 expanded their presence, moving into the old Borders space in 2013. The old pad of Stephen Berry's, however, would be less fortunate, seeing a furniture and rug gallery come and then go. But the space would, in the end, get filled in by Dick's Sporting Goods in 2015. Even H&M was on board for opening a store that year. However, Sears Holdings would spin off their location at the Oakland, passing it to Seritage Growth Properties. The store and the land it was sitting on would over time be subletted to make way for an at-home before Sears itself finally closed in 2018. Fast forward to 2022, the remaining Sears space would become home to Hobby Lobby. While I can't find evidence of a mall entrance, it is at least better than having a vacant hole that big. You know, I couldn't find a confirmation but I got a feeling that Taubman Centers owned the mall in the late 70s when this expansion was built. It looks very similar to their other malls. Someone want to confirm that for me or deny that? While the mall still appears to be surviving, a rapid transfer in owners would see the Oakland Mall go from CBRE to Center Cal Properties in 2020, then from Center Cal to Mario Chiesi, if I'm pronouncing that right. At this time, M. Chiesi Investments had announced the plans to renovate the mall and update its image yet again. At any day now, the footage here, recorded in 2021, will become obsolete. Unless that plan falls through and the small changes hands in ownership yet again. For better or for worse, while the mall will continue on with a new image, let us remember what once was, shall we? I'll admit it, I actually kind of like this mall. I am a fan of odd Franken malls like this one, where the expansion is almost completely different from the original mall. Like this two floor section approaching JCPenney. That little transfer from the two floors to one is a bit awkward though. Nothing but stairs and little escalators with an elevator buried to the side. And I don't know if there's a way to fix that. But the older mall with the early 90s look going is pleasant to look at and be in, especially with that fountain feature in the center court. I also remember stopping to eat at this mall's food court and I ended up having a meal from Golden Chicken. Now, I am easy to please and I don't ask for complicated dishes, but they did do a good job. That and chicken is a good enough break from Sabaro's or Panda Express or Charlie's. They don't pay me to say it, but if you're in Oakland Mall, why not give Golden Chicken a try? Assuming they're still there. Things can change over one year. Now, a lot can change in the future, but there is a plan in the works for this mall. 
although reading into it, it seems there's some interesting ideas at play. In a 2022 article, Chiesi plans on transforming the Oakland Mall into a more family-oriented destination, with intent to draw in a farmer's market in the parking lot, anchor restaurants, and even entertainers. Be it individuals or family fun centers, I'm not entirely sure. Although, one thing that stood out to me was the following. We're looking to bring in what I call hipster culture. Interesting statement, and quite ambitious with that spin. But who knows? It might just work. I've seen stranger ideas at work with malls, and at least it isn't just another, hey, let's demolish this mall and gentrify it into a fake downtown streetscape. Thanks for having me, Troy, Michigan. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Oakland Mall farewell and good luck in this mad, mad, mad world. As long as all the riffraff from Detroit doesn't make it up here. After all, you can't have <gasps> in Detroit.